Traveling the world with my wife hasn't slowed my love for doing guy stuff. And the one place that I always feel connected to my manhood is in a barber chair. Because I'm getting haircuts, beard trims, and neck shaves in unique places, I wanted to share the experiences with others that appreciate the craft of barbers around the world. Don't worry, I'll show you other cool cultural stuff along the way. These are my world barbershop adventures. Walking to the barber shop in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Going to Tokyo Barber Shop. It is comes highly highly recommended. When I told my follower base I was coming to the city. Several people told me to come to this barber shop. So really excited. Their uh, bald fades look tremendous, and uh, that's what's going on. Gonna make that happen. Shampooing before the haircut experience is my favorite way to start. Tokyo Barbershop seems to really understand the entire process and how to make their guys feel welcome and special. They have extraordinary views on Google and an awesome website. They also have a growing social media presence with professional photos. This shampoo treatment by Shrainich and ending with massage was exactly what I needed to relax before my time in the chair. Thank you very much. Not, not too much. Wow, not too much at all. And then just um, trying to let this grow. So just a little, just Yeah, next year. Yeah. Notice the long fingernail on the knock. This is common in Southeast Asia with men, particularly the thumb or pinky. It has many meanings, but the one that is most widely agreed upon is that it's a symbol of wealth. From times of way back, if you did manual work, you couldn't necessarily grow out your fingernails. 
So those that could were in the more affluent professions like doctors, professors, or businessmen. So those guys grew out their nails in a bragging sort of way. The tradition has continued symbolizing prosperity. told me to come here. When I said I was going to Phnom Penh, they said, you must go to Tokyo, barbershop. Famous barbershop. Check out the action in Tokyo Barbershop. Not only is the staff always making sure everyone's taken care of, but watch all the Westerners go in and out. During our four days in Phnom Penh, we saw more expats in that barbershop than we did walking around the city. His red string bracelet often is a symbol of bravery in the Buddhism faith. I'm not saying that is absolutely the case with Vinak, but we saw these often in Cambodia. There are women that sit outside of the Buddhist temples and give them to visitors for a donation. There are several prominent temples or wats in Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh is the capital and largest city in Cambodia with about 1.5 million people. We visited during Ban Um Tuk or the Water Festival which brought in Cambodians from all over the country to celebrate. It was a lot of fun to walk along the riverside path and watch the long tail boat races and fireworks. Tasting exotic food options like roaches and crickets was new for me and actually very good. Phnom Penh along with Siem Reap are significant tourist destinations in Southeast Asia. Angkor Wat in Siem Reap is a magnificent temple from the 12th century and on many travelers bucket list. The fact that Cambodia uses the US dollar makes it easy to understand how far your money will go and it goes a long way. the way that Banak gently guides my head to where he wants it. This subtle skill is very important. When barbers force the head aggressively, it can come across as rude at times, depending on how hard they move it.
check out the number of kids in the shop. This definitely demonstrates the range of skills by the barber and staff. I can't imagine it's easy to keep the attention of a young boy for more than five minutes. It's a great reflection on a barbershop when there is a wide age range of customers. Each barber has their own way to address and style the beard. It's even more interesting in cultures like Asia that typically don't or can't grow thick facial hair like in other parts of the world. cleanup is so critical and often overlooked by barbers. I love how the knock bladed down the neckline.
is definitely one of the better beard shape preps that I've had with their super hot talon oils. I was too big for the chair though, which made it uncomfortable at times, but all in all, a great treatment. And you know I'm a fan of the big bristle brush to lather on the shaving cream. sure if Tokyo Barbershop always does a double shave or if they just wanted to make sure they got it right this time. The attention to detail was appreciated regardless but communication might have helped here. I wasn't sure why they did it twice.
Their detailed cleanup and towel process is very good, making sure I left feeling clean and fresh, getting rid of excess hairs, and then applying the aftershave lotion with the head massage. Perfect. If you were into body massages, Cambodia has some of the best and cheapest that I've ever experienced. You can get a really good full body 90 minute massage for $10 in some spots. Tokyo Barbershop, uh, tourist haven for travelers jumping in there and getting haircuts. It was, it was awesome. It was, uh, it was longer than I thought it would be. <sighs> At an hour and a half, I didn't think it would be that long when I, I first went there. Shampoo in the beginning, two shaves, that was different. But in the end, the product was great. They did a great job. Um, the ball fade, look at it. Ball fade is super tight. I mean, that's. I think it's the first time I've got an actual ball fade in a real long time, and it's, uh, I did it because you could tell in their photos they were really good at it, and that's why I wanted to do it, and uh, I'm happy that I did. Tighten the beard up nicely, but overall, I'm very pleased at the, uh, the effort and everything that went into it. Price point, you can't beat it. It was, it was pretty amazing, it was a lot of fun. And uh, Today we it was great. Please comment down below. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos of me and barbershops around the world.